Hello, my name is Jim. This is my podcast, The Bloody Vegans. You're very welcome to it. Each week, I'll be traveling ever deeper into the world of veganism, discovering along the way a multitude of viewpoints from the political and ethical to the practical. I'll be doing this through a series of conversations, each aiming to further illuminate my understanding and hopefully yours of all things plant-centric. Before we get started on this week's podcast and I, I go about introducing our, our guest this week, I wanted to, I suppose, share a, share some thoughts on the senseless killing of George Floyd over in the States at the hands of the police. And I'll caveat this sort of to start with, with whatever I say will feel trivial, feels trivial, feels uh, irrelevant. And in many ways, is you know, it's it, it, my my view of it, with all of the, all of the privilege I'm afforded. It, it feels completely insignificant in the grand scheme of of things. And for what it's worth, the platform I have is is very small. You know, I'm not. I'm not um I'm not a Joe Rogan brackets thankfully um or uh you know a Mark Marin or you know anyone with with that level of um of audience to speak to and so you know what what use it would do to share my view is is limited to say to say the least however i think it's incumbent upon all of us who have any sort of platform and in fact just incumbent on all of us full stop who interact in society to stand up when we see injustice veganism for me is one of those one of those subjects where uh, the reason, one of the, the the major reasons for me becoming vegan and going on this this journey, was a sense of injustice to non-human animals and that the plight in their their short lives that they that they have at the hands of at the hands of us humans. Um. And. Uh, so, so injustice, you know, I, I've reflected a lot about how that injustice I've felt perfectly comfortable in the past sharing how how it makes me feel. You know, I have a podcast about um, how how we treat animals in the world and how we treat our planet and all of these subjects we cover and. For whatever reason, call it guilt, call it uh, fear of saying the wrong thing. In the past, there's probably been times where I've avoided getting involved in a conversation like uh, racial tensions, uh, racism, prejudice, discriminatory behavior, police brutality, violence against people of different races, religions, backgrounds, genders, sexualities, etc. Because maybe, you know, I, I haven't felt like there was validity or uh, I could I could speak with any sort of authority or from any any perspective that meant anything. And I've come to realize over the last week or so and I feel uh, shamed shameful that it has taken me as long as it's taken me to to realize this but for prejudice discrimination hatred and violence to exist kind of all that's required is for people to say nothing to do nothing to to not act 
when they see injustice. And the dissonance in that for me is is apparent when I look at the inconsistency of being vegan and then not calling out other discrimination, other violence that you see in other areas of, of the world, in other areas of life. And, and I don't mean to, you know, for many... Uh, it may feel trivial to equate the two and I, and I don't and I don't wish to to for it to come across that way to equate veganism and and black lives matter uh, racial prejudice religious uh, discrimination etc i don't i don't i don't wish it to come across as i'm trivializing it at all the, the, both issues all all issues of injustice need to be called out it's it's not a black or white issue or a vegan issue or a gay rights issue or transgender issue it's a right or a wrong issue and um and i appreciate people have different views but some things and in my mind some of those things being uh, areas of injustice areas of discrimination are are right or wrong And in the case of discrimination, in the case of hatred and violence, they're wrong. So for what it's worth, I I wanted to use whatever platform this podcast is to sort of nail my colours to that mast, if you like, and to say that all of these injustices, these violent acts that are committed against any group are wrong and I denounce them and I think we all have a a responsibility to call them out when we see them in society and we all have a responsibility I think to educate one another and I and I thank everyone around me in my sphere whether it be the the real physical world or the digital world of social media who over the last couple of weeks and and over the last few years has educated me in so many different ways and helped me to learn what different injustices people face um and i and you know that journey continues so thank you so Moving on, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate this week to be joined by Kev Stewart. Kev Stewart is a professional footballer, uh, has been since 2013 in his sort of senior career, um, played for a, a, a variety of clubs, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, Liverpool, and most latterly Hull City, to name some of the the biggest clubs that he's, he's played with in the two top flights of, of English football. And... Um, He's a phenomenal player as well, so uh, well well worth checking out Kev on the pitch. But for the last three years of his career, he has been uh, vegan. He's been plant-powered. And so uh, I'm going to chat to Kev about all kinds of different issues uh, related to veganism, performance, sport, etc., and beyond, um, in fact. So without further ado, it's a conversation between me and Kev Stewart. start off with that question then Kev as we were, as we were just yeah. about to get into it so how, how did you go about getting into the world of veganism be good to hear a bit about your story yeah I um I started I started hearing things here and there just about how it could um possibly improve performance and recovery and um and energy and then I remember hearing that Djokovic was um was vegan um, I'm pretty sure it was Djokovic maybe it was someone else but I feel like it was Djokovic um, so I, I was actually at Liverpool at the time and I, I went to the nutritionist and I asked her about it and she put me off of it completely. She was like, it's a no-go, basically. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I was like, right. So I kind of forgot about that idea for, for a while. Um, and then it was, then my missus said, oh, we should watch this documentary. To be fair, she, 
she always used to drop little things in about milk has got this in it, milk has got that in it, we shouldn't drink milk. So I actually, then I actually stopped drinking milk. Um, and then, yes, you recommended this documentary we watched, is uh, What the Health. So I, I watched that and I literally was with, with the guy that I don't want to watch it, don't want to watch it, not interested. Um, and I thought, you know, let me just watch it. And then literally after that documentary that night, we literally cleared our fridge out overnight. Wow. Pull it outside our front door and then it was kind of from then. But then even then, because it was only about health, um, I think you're, when it is about health and that's your, your motivation, I do think you're, you're likely to, to dip back into things here and there, like dairy and um, things like that. And that, that's what I did. But then it was only until I really started understanding the ethical side and what actually happens in the in the industry, the meat industry, dairy industry, is when I really just kind of put a stop to it. I said, no, that this is enough. I'm not going to touch anything else. Um, got rid of my clothes, everything. So from then, obviously, never, never gone back. Wow. So when when you kind of you'd watched what the health and it's made this like massive impact on you to make that decision kind of overnight. And I know you said you sort of did go back and forth a little bit with some, with with some products, but yeah. when you when you sort of turned up at kind of work, if you like, at training like the next the next day and had the had the conversation with the nutritionists and so on and perhaps the other players, what was the reaction like? Um, so with, with the with the, with the nutritionist. He he's 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 a good guy. So he was like, he let me know that he didn't agree with it, and he didn't think that I could do it, and he didn't. He think that he thought I would struggle physically with it, um, but he was open to helping me find the best solution for it and the best way to get what I need. Um, so that so yeah, so he 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 was open to do that. He helped me out, um, and then I changed his mind after after that for a couple <laughs> months in, and I was obviously still flying and everything was great. And I put on a lot of muscle purposely because I wanted to show that I could do it. Um, so he, yeah, he, he, his mind changed. I mean, he still doesn't, I, I think he does. I still think he fully knows. No, sorry, he does know that, it's, that you can thrive off it, but he just still thinks um, eating meat is, is, more, op- is more optimal. Um, but now, yeah, like he's fully open to, to, to people going vegan if it's done right. Which before he wasn't, so which is obviously a good thing. That's awesome. And, and would you say that you you started to feel the benefits of it? You know, as a as a player, was that was there kind of noticeable improvement? I mean, the the one people talk about a lot is recovery. You yeah. know, was that was that an experience you had? Yeah, I think to be honest, I didn't when I when I changed over, I didn't feel a huge amount different, which is a good thing because I think if I can feel the same eating plant based and not torturing and killing any animals and why would I not so um but then one thing yeah one thing I did notice was after games and after tough tough sessions I didn't get that same um like tightness and stiffness in my, in my muscles and the next day I always felt a lot better and I always felt feel like I felt a lot better than other players like when I would um come in the next day after a game and everyone was really tired and I, I, just, I felt all right I, I I didn't really feel like I just played a game so um, recovery-wise, I, I, I definitely felt that. Um, Energy-wise, I probably, on the pitch and fitness-wise, probably felt the same. Um, I think maybe one thing I did notice is that that energy during the day, just when you get home, usually I would like, I'll kind of hit a wall and be really tired after I eat or um, at some point during the day, just feel really, really down and drained. But then now for like during the day, I'm just, I'm kind of, I kind of sustain the energy throughout until I go to bed. And especially after I eat, I feel energised after I eat rather than when you eat meat. Do you know when you eat meat, you, you, you feel really slumped after and you kind of just want to go on the couch and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just feel, do you know what I mean? I feel a little more alive. because I feel like I've just eaten almost energy, basically. So, um, yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel better in, in, in them two departments. Yeah, definitely relate to that. The the feeling after a meal, you feel, you feel full but not sluggish. You know, yeah. it's a different different experience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It'd be good to just hear a little bit about how you. I mean, I'm just intrigued how you managed to sort of rebuild the diet. Almost like you know, as a as a professional athlete, 
I imagine you were, you know, fairly controlled in in your diet and very aware nutritionally. And, um, and so, you, you know, there's a lot of knowledge that's built up over the course of time of what's going to be good and what's going to be bad for you. And I imagine you, you've had to kind of relearn all of that, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. I, I, I honestly don't think it's that hard. I think, yeah, I, can admit, I did have probably a good base of, um, of nutritional knowledge just from obviously being, being an athlete. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's, it's relatively hard. I just kind of thought, okay, I have my normal meal. What do I have? I have meat, I have vegetables, I have carbs. And then that's probably around it. Then just really just replace, replace the meat and find another, another um, form of protein. That's what it was for me. Um, which obviously I got, I, got, I got help with to just find um, places where I can get protein from, which has worked out to be really easy. There's protein in basically everything. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so simple. Um, then obviously you've got the normal supplements that you take that I took before anyways. So like protein shakes, I just got a vegan version. So I really, I, I just kind of have the same diet, but I just find, found the vegan alternative for everything. So Oh, really interesting. Yeah, on a Monday, if I always eat lasagna, I would just have... Um, vegan mints and vegan cheese rather than dairy cheese and um, and um, and meat. I really do think it's a lot simpler than people yeah. make out. So was that that was the approach you took then? I, I like that approach. So you, you, it was what did I eat before? How do I replace it? Yeah. Did Did you find yourself ever falling into the trap of perhaps eating too many kind of meat substitutes and that sort of thing? Were you Were you quite whole foods, plant based, or what sort of what sort of vegan? I suppose did you become? <laughs> yeah. No. I um. I I eat a lot of meat meat substitutes. To be fair, I really do like it. I think you do have that. You, you know, I, I have that um, that crave for like that meat type feel foods. So like whenever I have something now, I'm always like, I want, I want a meat substitute in it. I'm kind of moving away from it a little bit. I am starting to enjoy whole foods more. Um, but yeah, I do eat a lot of meat substitutes to be fair. But I enjoy, I enjoy them, man. And um, they've never been a problem. It's always been good. Been eating them for like three years now. So and I, and I feel great. So um, yeah, I don't I don't think they're too much of a problem. I know they're definitely not as bad as, bad as meat. So that's well, that, that I mean that's true, isn't it? You know, they, they they do sometimes get a little bit of a bad rap, or some of them do. I think there's a there's a real um, there's a real diverse range, to be fair, of, of meat substitutes. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I think I think you're right that there's a uh, there's there's definitely some good ones out there. Um, what was the kind of reaction like of the other players? I'm intrigued as to that. I mean, you, you mentioned there that you've kind of almost converted the nutri- the club nutritionist, which I which I think's a huge credit to you. What yeah. was the other players like? I imagine a, a football dressing room could be full of potential um, <laughs> potential material for them with somebody being vegan who's, who who yeah. wasn't before. Yeah, do you know I, I do get a lot of stick. Um, but do you know what's the, the sad thing? The sad thing is, I, I do when we talk about it, a lot of people are really intrigued, and I can see a lot of people want to try it and want to do it. But they see, I think they see so they see me get so much stick, they just don't want that hassle. Do you know what I mean? So they won't, yeah. so, so they won't do it. Whereas you know, I just don't think they have the courage to do it because I think it does take a lot of courage in a football environment. Because um, you do get a lot of stick, you get a lot of a lot of people that mock it. One thing that doesn't help is that the food um, I get supplied from the club and um, when we go away to away games and hotels, the food is, is, isn't great. Well, the food at the training ground's not too bad, but the food at the hotel is, 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 is normally quite shocking. So they, they see that come out and they're like, oh, that's what, that's what vegan food is like. So it puts people off. Yeah, so the, the, the food that, um, that the clubs supply isn't great and... When we go to away games and stay in hotels, the, the, the food at the hotels is normally a bit of a shambles. So they look at that and they see that food come out and they kind of think, okay, that's what oh, vegan food okay. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just like no, that's, this literally isn't what vegan food is. It's literally just a salad. Like, it's just, or they just give me like couscous and a pepper or something like that. <laughs> it's so bad, man. Like, sometimes I even have to, I, I bring my own food sometimes. That's how bad it gets. But... Um, so that, yeah, that, that's 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 one thing that I mean, if, if nice food came out all the time, the kind of food I eat at home, do you know, what I mean, people would um, would, would look at it in a, with a different perspective. That's really interesting. So, do you feel like a bit of an obligation then when you bring in your own food to to make it kind of um, look very appealing to the other players? <laughs> no, 
No, to be fair, I normally just like, I don't really like put it out like that. I normally just like eat that and then have it, have that later, like by myself or come down later and eat it. Because, um, well, usually it's just like a container that's been in my bag. So I usually don't look great anyways. <laughs> yeah. But- <laughs> yeah, but, but there's a lot, there's a lot of banner about it. Um, yeah, is it? There's a lot of, we have, we have a lot of chat. We have a lot of chats about the ethical side, and but then sometimes there's certain people you can have the chat with, certain people you can't because they just get a bit silly, and they just, do you know what I mean, the the usual vegan banner that they normally revert to. Do, do you think there's any of the players who you know the ones you you said who kind of like I'm imagining kind of almost like subtly perhaps when the rest of the the lads aren't around are starting to yeah. sort of ask like yeah so Kev like when you <laughs> you know do, do you have you have you found exactly. some of those have kind of like the, those relationships have developed and people have you, you can tell they're kind of on the verge they just need a push yeah a hundred percent like. We'll literally be around the table with like 20 different people, all, all 20 people talking about it, talking about the food, talking about the ethical side, everything. And they'll just be sitting there silent, not a word. And then later in the shower, they'll come up, okay, so what is it you actually eat? Where can I get this from? Where'd you get your protein from? I'm like, why, why, don't you speak, why don't you speak up? Why didn't you ask these questions before? Um, so yeah, we normally do get a lot of that. And um, you get a few people that actually, actually came across a guy the other day, who, um, one of the other players that, Pretty much eats a vegan a vegan diet. He has meat 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 or fish. I think I think he has fish like once a week or twice a week. Um, that don't talk about it. I don't tell people that he does that. So, do you know what I mean? So you get people that just kind of keep it to themselves. Or yeah, I just don't think they're they're really up up for up for the amount of stick they that they're gonna get. See, you you feel really obviously really passionately about the the subject. You know enough to put yourself out there and and so on. Yeah. Is is is, is that you know, you mentioned that your journey started with health. Did the did the kind of ethical side come fairly quickly afterwards then for you? Um, no, not probably about six months later. Yeah, and, w- and what was the source of the information for you? Was it, you know, like you start watching one documentary and Netflix tells you to watch another one? And- <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, I think it was just Instagram videos, you know. I think I, I was just, you, when you just go vegan, you kind of just follow the, you start following Earth and Ed and, people like that, just naturally. And then obviously you start seeing their content, you start seeing the horrific videos that they start posting. Um, and then I really start looking into it and really start finding out what's, what's actually going on. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not really one to um, see something and just be like, mm, no, I don't want to watch it and turn a blind eye to it. I really want to know what I'm doing and what I'm, um, when, I'm, when I'm eating dairy, what, what knock-on effect is it actually having. Um, so, yeah, I just really started looking into it and really started finding out what's, what's going on. You, you mentioned your partner back there was kind of pushing you at the beginning to to look at things like, you know, milk particularly and what was in it and, you know, this kind yeah. of stuff. Is, is your partner vegan or was at that, at that time? Or And have you kind of, are you all as a family now now kind of vegan? Yeah, so she, she's vegan and as a family we're, we're vegan. Um, she wasn't at the time, no. She just... Um, I think she, she was just interested in it, and I think she was kind of on the verge of of moving towards moving towards it. So um, uh, yeah, so we are all vegan. Kids are vegan. The only thing I've got a three month old baby who's not, so he's on um, just normal formula milk because my missus can't breastfeed. So this is the one thing that we found really hard that there's no there's no actual vegan baby formulas. I mean, there's one that's it's not really a, it is vegan, but it's not vegan for that purpose it's just in case babies have um an intolerance to milk and it's just i i just don't really trust it it doesn't seem too great it tastes like sh- can you swear can you can you swear yeah you can swear yeah. yeah it tastes like shit so i tried it my, i tried it myself um and we just we just didn't really feel comfortable putting him on it and he, to be fair he didn't actually take it either so it was either that or not eat so i was like you know what, let me just keep him on this Soon as, as soon as I'm ready to start giving him food, as soon as he's ready, get him off it, and then from there he'll be fully vegan. But my uh, my my older kid, he's turning two in August. He's he's fully vegan. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. And h- how's that experience been with a little two year old? I've got one myself actually. So. Have you? Yeah. Nice. Boy, but you got a boy. Little or boy. Little boy. Oh uh, no! Yeah, we. I got boys as well. I got two boys. Um, no, nah, he's, he's he's literally like the light of your life, man. He's. And it's so entertaining. He's so sweet. He's like, every day is just like a movie for him and, and for us. Like, he's always doing new things. Um, he's just got a proper, really cheeky character. He's funny. So no, we're, we're loving it, man. 
have you had any experiences yet like you know with with kind of uh, other other parents or uh, little you know, two year old parties or that any anything like that yet no not yet you know um no we haven't we haven't to be fair well, i mean we had a uh... No, well, we, his first birthday party, we had a party and it was fully vegan. We had loads of people around. To be fair, they, they, they enjoyed the food. Um, but no, not yet. I think at once there was a health visitor that came around and we told him that he's, he's vegan. She didn't really like it. That's fully about is, it. Is it not, not, not yet. It's definitely an interesting one that, that, that you know, you mentioned the club nutritionists and, uh, and the health visitors and so on. There's, it definitely feels like, certainly from your experiences, that perhaps the, um, the sort of the more formal kind of medical world hasn't, uh, hasn't necessarily embraced it just yet. Would you say that would yeah, be fair? Yeah, definitely, because that's just what they've been taught. They just, they, they've been taught that all their lives so I think even when you kind of show them another way I feel, I feel they, they feel a bit offended a little bit because that's what they've done their whole life and that's what they know so I think you're challenging their beliefs a little bit and challenging their um, like, I always found it strange that okay it's pretty much a fact that meat um, causes cancer right it's directly linked to cancer yeah so I've been so I've been eating meat my whole life and I've been at top clubs with top nutritionists why has no one ever told me that that, that, that can happen? I've, I've only ever known meat to be just very good for you. You need it, protein, this and that. But why has no one ever told me about, about, about the side effects of it, that it can, of what it can do? Do you know what I mean? So I, I, just, I just think maybe it's just what they get told, what they get taught. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously not just, just their opinion. They've obviously been taught that from university or, or school. Yeah, yeah. You, so I've always found that strange. Do you think that it, 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 like the world of professional sport, and you mentioned like Novak Djokovic there, and like you know people like yourself, it's been reported that Lionel Messi's had periods during seasons when he's when he's been vegan. You know, Chris Smalling we've talked about and so on. Do yeah. you think there is a, a a shift in in the movement, even if it's not from the the sort of the nutritionists and the the club doctors, but you know from the players? Do you think there's any sort of movement towards it? Oh, definitely, man. I think if you think back a couple of years ago, there'll be nowhere near... I, I think you would... Yeah, I don't think that you, you'd hear of any plant-based footballers whatsoever. Um, there's definitely a few now. Do you think... Not, 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 not loads. So I don't think it's... So it look, it's, it's, made, it's made noise, definitely. People, people hearing about it, people thinking about it. I, I actually didn't even really know what vegan was three years ago. So it's like everyone's aware of it now. Yeah. Even if, even if they're not vegan, they know about it. They know what it is. Um, so I definitely think it's, it's, it's made an impact. It's kind of sharing the, the message quite... Has it, it been something that's quite important to you? Because, you know, you've, like, you've made a, a fairly bold decision in being quite out there. You mentioned some, some players who've, who kind of almost are, are certainly nutritionally anyway, living the life, but aren't necessarily prepared to put themselves out there. Is it important to you to, to kind of push the, the message forward? Yeah, I think, I think in, in, in two ways. Um, I think one, because I feel like I, I have a, a decent following um, and a good platform. So I do feel like I do have a responsibility for in terms of pushing like the injustice to start there. It's my way of activism, it feels like a little bit. Um, I, I do probably um, get onto myself a little bit that I don't do enough. I don't, I don't do enough to help out and, and, and try and make a change. I, don't, I, I, just, I just feel like I, I need to do my bit by pushing it and that's from the ethical side. So I, I um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel I probably, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Cool. Yeah, probably just, just I'm probably just on, on, my, on, my, on myself a little bit in my, in my, in my, own, in my own head, just thinking, look, there's a lot, I mean, animals ain't got a voice, man, so I just feel like um, I'm always the one that likes to go on the, the underdog side and the people that are being oppressed. I, I just feel like I have a bit of a connection with them for some reason, so I just feel like I have to do my bit, whether it, whether, whatever form that's in, to, uh, to try and push it and try and make, make a bit of a change. Um, and as well, I do like to prove people wrong. So I feel like people feel like you can't be an athlete on a vegan diet. 
And I feel like I just like to change the myths and change the stigmas um, around things. So, you know, people think vegan food is very boring, which it isn't. Um, so I just, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think it was right for me, for me to just make a page and show people what I eat as, a, as an athlete. Like you said as well before, before when we were speaking about, um, before not a lot of vegans were very relatable to people. So I think, you know, a fo- an athlete and a footballer set, got pushing it out there for kids growing up, I think they'll, um, I mean, they'll, they'll look, they've got someone to look up to that they can relate to. So there's, there's a much better chance of them um, trying it and, 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 and trying a plant-based diet. Yeah, definitely. More, more power to you. I think it's 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 awesome and very admirable that you that you want to use that platform, like you say, as like a form of activism. And I, I definitely think it is. You know, I think it's a uh, it's hugely important for people like yourself who, are, you know, football is so so ingrained in our in our sort of DNA as a society that it's uh, it's very important. I think for 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 those people. Uh, to to stand up when they they believe in in something, uh, yeah. I, I'm intrigued as to whether you've had yet, and maybe you haven't. But at your level, the my perception is from the, from the outside that that uh, football clubs and and footballers kind of have to be quite sort of sanitized and and quite mainstream and non controversial in their viewpoint. Uh, there's so much, I suppose, uh, so much PR, so much uh, sponsorship at stake, this kind of stuff. Is that something that you've encountered or, or something that kind of concerns you as as you kind of b- share the message further? Um, do, you know, you, do you know what? Yeah, you're, you're right, you know, and I, I really don't like it. I really feel like a lot of people try and make footballers really robotic no real characters, they want you to be this exact model and you can't steer out of that lane. You've got to be like this, you've got to say this. And it, I really don't like it. Um, so I, I, I normally always try and push myself to if I want to say something and I believe in something that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it. Cause I, do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna go too far for no reason, but I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite logical, so I wouldn't do anything like that. But if I want to say something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. And I wanna, if, if it's a little controversial, then, um, then just just say it anyways if that's what you want. So uh, yeah, I really don't don't like it when um, I, think, I think I think fans and that as well. They just kind of just want you to just be football, and we don't want to hear like come play the match on Saturday, and then we don't want to hear from you until next Saturday. But do you know what I mean if you if you choose, if you want to be something a bit more and you want to choose to do something different and push something on your page that's not football, then I think you have the, the right to do that, and I don't think you have to. Um, to not be swear or anything, do anything crazy to, to push a point across. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's not really something that con- that concerns me. I think I always think about, normally think about what I post and what I say, but a lot of the times it might be like, mm, do I really want to push this? Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just keep quiet, but then I'll just normally um, push myself to know, so, I mean, that, if that's what you want to do, then do it. So that, that, that's the angle I, I normally come from. And I do think a lot of players need to be more like that. Because I know so many players, man, that, that are interested in this or they believe in that, but they just, they, they probably don't have the courage or they're too, they're too scared what people are going to say and what they're going to think. So they don't end up doing it. Which is, I, I, would, I would like to see, um, I'd like to see a change in that for, 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 for players. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you're you're right. There's definitely a, a a desire from certain pockets of fans. I think it's kind of split. You know, there's some fans who want footballers to, like you say, just be footballers, and then there's probably a I think some people who kind of long for the days when footballers could say what they yeah, thought. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think about the post match interview, and you kind of know what you're gonna hear. Like <laughs> all the time, I hate, but I, I hate them interviews because you're asking me questions that I can only say one answer to. Yeah. <laughs> so I just feel like there's no point in me being here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, are you looking forward to the game? I'm not. You know, I'm not going to say I'm not looking forward to it, even if I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Like, do you no. know what I mean? So why are you ask, asking me that? I prefer you ask a bit more deeper questions. Do you know what I mean? And there's probably more chance of me being a bit more honest if you ask. Do you know what I mean? More important and, and deeper questions. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and I suppose even in the the post match ones where you get asked about a decision, you can't you can't say what you think so, about that decision. Yeah, no, to, 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 to be to be fair, I think like that probably I would, and I think I think people should. Uh, I think it's just a bit refreshing and just just why why not like even if you even if you you, know, you get a bit of stick or something. I just do you know what I, I really like? If you look at like the NBA in America, all the players they're so out there. They just do what they want, say what they want. I know it's a bit different and maybe they're a bit too extreme sometimes, but I do think we need to take a leaf out their their book a little bit. I was going to ask that actually, because you know, we were talking before we we came on um, and hit record, we were talking about sort of social justice movements and and kind of the sort of shocking events that have gone on in the last couple of days in the States. And with we you know, we I I look over to the states sometimes, and you think the the kind of taking the knee during the anthem, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement um, that that's really been amplified by professional sportsmen onto a global platform. And I, I yeah. sometimes think, you know, when you translate that over to Premier League football or Championship football, there is this huge platform, but perhaps a a fear or. A, you know that it's it. You know the it's probably too heavily policed for players to feel comfortable to do that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I, I'm intrigued your your view on whether you think there probably needs to be, you know, more people comfortable enough to use that platform and speak out. Yeah, no, I, def- I definitely think so. Uh, I think it's when you think about it, it's really quite obvious that, that there's a lack of that in in English football, and it's always. I think it's always really appreciated when someone actually does do something on, on and, and come out and speak about things. Um, so yeah, I don't, it's tough. I, I don't think maybe people should be made to feel comfortable. I just feel like people have got to maybe just get a bit more comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm. the same things that they, they, they believe in. So I think just it's a personal thing where maybe you've got to just push yourself a little bit more and maybe don't be, I mean, at the end of the day, it's your, it's your life. If you if you don't want to, then you don't have to. But I just feel like maybe we do the more the more, the more people that listen to you, I think the more responsibility you have. Um, but then I guess that if someone's not comfortable and they don't want to take on responsibility, then they don't have to because it's, it's their life. But I would just like to see see it more. Yeah, I think I, I think you're absolutely right. People do appreciate it. I think people feel more connected. You know, we talked about being relatable. You know, you, yeah. you, you know, you as a as a vegan footballer will definitely make veganism more relatable. But I think also just you you, you become more relatable as a as a human being uh, beyond football when when you sort yeah. of share an opinion. You know, you share a view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true, man. Because even even maybe at some clubs, if there's a certain touchy topic that's going around and a player says something about it. You might get a, a group. You might get a message in the in the in the team group chat later on saying, "Oh, can you please refrain from talking about this?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, it's it's probably a bit tough on players sometimes to say what they want. Yeah, I imagine it must be an absolute minefield, you know, for 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 you guys to to sort of have the responsibility not just of performing at the highest level, but then to almost be carrying the the PR of the. The club, you know, the the perception yeah. that a club wants to to give of of their players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was even watching something um, Raheem Sterling done the other day. He done a he done a video with um, I can't remember her name is that like one of the most famous American football um, in women's football. I can't remember her name. Though. But they were talking about just obviously she's American and Raheem is from um, is English, and they were kind of talking about the difference a little bit and saying how. Americans are so much more laid back and English people are really uptight and there's no real personalities. And then Raheem Sterling was talking about, and I relate to this as well because of when I was growing up through academies, is that they really try and mould you into a person. That if you've got earrings in, oh, no, you've got to take your earrings out. If you wear a hat, no, you've got to take your hat off. And they all try and make you the same, which I don't really like. You know what I mean? I do feel like you've got to let people just express themselves a little bit off the pitch. And I do think that will help on the pitch as well when you're when you're more relaxed and you're you feel like yourself. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I think when you think about all the players, the iconic players over the years that everyone sort of loves and reveres, 
they've all had a bit of personality about them, you know, whether it's the, yeah. you know, the Cantonars or the Henri's or, you know, you, you, you name it over the years, there's a, there's always a bit of personality about them. I mean, obviously yeah. Canton are probably went a bit too far with certain things, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, like, if that happens, that happens. I mean, I think that's, I prefer that than just staying quiet the whole of your career and whole of your life. No, I agree. I, th- I, I think, uh, I, th- I think those are, those are the things that, that fans really want to see you know, is, is people being, being human, being real, you know? Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes fans like, they like it, but then when you go against their belief, they're like, "Oh, be quiet, you're, you're a footballer, like, stop talking." Well, that that's true, and I imagine that that probably comes a lot with with something like veganism, and and you you definitely you know going back to the 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 sort of taking the knee in the American football and so on during the the national anthems, and they, those players have had a huge amount of backlash from people who don't agree with that viewpoint or don't think it has any yeah. place in sport and so on, um, yeah. and and then it, I suppose. And that that's the I think really interesting when you you know think about your um you you being outspoken on on any any view uh social justice inequality uh veganism you know you name it there's almost it feels to me like there's a potential sort of risk element to it like it feels like it, there's a a career riskiness almost if that makes sense would yeah would, would, do you, do you would, feel that at all in football uh not really I think it depends depends just what angle you're coming from. I mean, if it's ridiculous, then yeah, possibly, because <laughs> then maybe clubs look at it and be like, oh, do I really want that kind of person? But then I think, no, I think, I think it could maybe work the opposite, to be fair. I think if you're um, known for, you know, having a strong character, then I think oh, people would like that. So, I mean, I think, I think um, some people as well, they, they might like the branding side of it. If, 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 uh, if, if you're making... Um, if a lot of people like follow you to hear what you've got to say and they might, they might, they might like that so that can bring other opportunities. But you know, I yeah, I think it depends what you say. There's obviously there's things that are really risky that you could say, but I think if you're just speaking from the heart and being logical and being rational, I don't really think you can go too far wrong. No, I, I think you're right. And then like you say, if you, you sort of being reasonable in your viewpoint, there's probably even if people disagree with it, there's probably very little to be upset about. You know, it, yeah. it, it's just a part of a discussion and a debate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, moving on to sort of just getting into a bit of the my new shy. Uh, just uh, I'm intrigued as to things like you mentioned a while back that you, you removing the kind of clothes out of the wardrobe and you being, you know, all in on it from a veganism point of view. Has that made yeah. you have to relook at you know everything from football boots to products that you use in the in the club, whether it be uh, you know anything that's used as a kind of for massage purposes and things like that? How far has it has it had to go for you? Um, no, well, so the fur, the fur, so as far as it went, so obviously no clothes. Uh, my boots were already just fabric; they weren't leather anyway, so that was cool. Um, I, I changed my car. My car was um, had leather seats, so I, ch- I changed that, which is it's tough because most cars maybe this. And I and I, I I changed the steering wheel as well, so that, um, so I so I did that, um, which is tough with cars to be fair because a lot of them just have leather on some point that maybe. It's, Certain things you can't actually get rid of. So, um, but yeah, I managed. To, I managed to do that. But then, yeah, no. In terms of like, I don't know. If a seat is is leather, then I probably don't think about it. I'll just sit on it. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just my my conscious decision to just not buy anything. That's 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 the main thing for me to not to not add another demand to buying leather or any other um, animal product. So that's 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 the main thing for me. I mean, if it's there, it's already been bought. So it's not going to really make too much of a of, of a difference now, but um, yeah, I just really try and uh, make sure I'm not I'm not adding that demand to, to animal products. It, cars are definitely like a, it's a, they're a really interesting one. Like there's yeah. there's still a trend uh, or still a not even a trend. It's just a, just a, a, a sort of known fact that any luxury car there seems to be a, a an option of leather seats, and you know it's just it's. It's like the only option uh, for, uh, in yeah. certain cars, and like um, I, it's changing slowly. Though I have seen, like I think Tesla of um, yeah. uh, starting to use vegan leather and so on and so forth. Yeah, so. well, my my I got my mine are vegan leather. They are it's called article leather. Yeah, 
Yeah. It, so mine's a Mercedes. So Mercedes do do those. Yeah, I, I'd heard something a while back actually for, that um, Mercedes are committing to moving all all their leather to um, to vegan leather. Yeah, that'd be sick. Because we felt I was speaking to the guy that that I got it from, and he was just saying it's like um, it's more sustainable and it lasts longer and it's cheaper. And I was like, all right, so why are all your cars not using it? Yeah, why would you not? Well, so I think maybe maybe they are. Uh, apparently, in talking about influence of sports people, uh, uh, so so I'd heard from. Um, my my strength and conditioning uh, friend I was telling you about earlier, who's yeah. who's worked with with Lewis Hamilton. Apparently, the influence of Lewis Hamilton on the Mercedes team has 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 meant that they they considered it and switched to it. And like you say, I think if if something makes like financial sense for a company, then they're going to do it too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, unless you get the the petty people, maybe they're thinking of the petty people that because it's vegan leather now, they're not going to buy the car. <laughs> Do you, do you have you found a bit of that before, like with reaction to maybe you know thinking about food and so on, and perhaps even performance? Do, do you find things uh, sometimes get labelled as always oh, because because Kev's vegan? <laughs> if, if there's a mistake 100%. or a recovery Can't, thing yeah. or anything like that, it's like well, it wouldn't happen if you weren't vegan. All the time, all the time. If I if I ever get ill during the winter, oh, it's because you're vegan. All right, so. What was the reason before when I got ill and I ate meat? It's, it's, it's silly. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's silly. If I get an injury or it's because my bones are weak because I'm vegan. Yeah, it's, it's all, yeah, you get that a lot. Is it generally in jest though? Is it like banter or do you think there's, yeah, there's I think it's, an element? I think, it's, I, think, I think it's mainly banter. I think there might be, actually be an element of, of well, what they think is truth, maybe. But it usually comes in the form of banter. Yeah, you should, well, I'd hope so anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about your your sort of wider family? When you when you kind of said that you were going to go vegan, were they? You know, they've obviously watched you kind of grow up in the sport and and get to the level that you've got. You know, the very sort of elite level. Um, was there any kind of concerns from your friends and family that you were going to lose performance or that you were taking some kind of risk when you when you switched to veganism? No, no, no. They were they were all, they were all quite cool with it. They just some of the, Well, my my dad even well, thought about trying it, it didn't last long. My sister always used to ask me for recipes. Um, she always goes in and out of it. But no, there's no there's nothing nothing like that. They were just they were just um probably a bit more just intrigued as as to why and, and what I'm eating. And you almost almost got them converted by the sound of it. Um yeah, no, to be fair, I didn't ever feel like they were gonna convert, but I knew they just had a little dabble in it. Awesome. They, they, when they come to mind, they always love the food that, that my missus makes. So then from then, they're like, oh my God, yeah, the food was really nice. I'm going to try it when I get home. But then it just doesn't last long. <laughs> well, I think that that's always the way, isn't it? You talked about it earlier with like the reverse of that when you go to a, a, a hotel on an away trip. And yeah. uh, like there's always the, the reverse of that, I think. It almost feels like, I don't know about you, but I always feel like a bit of an obligation for any food that I give to anyone who's non-vegan to be incredible. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. <laughs> have you found, like, from a cooking perspective, that you're that you've had to? I know you mentioned that your approach, and I think it's a it's a great one of like, what did I like before? I'm just going to remake that. But have you found that you've discovered kind of ingredients or products, protein sources, whatever it may be, that you just didn't even know existed? Is your your kind of culinary vocabulary had to expand over the course of time? If you like, yeah, no, it has to be fair too. So I, it's not actually me that does the cooking. It's my missus that does all the cooking. So she's, um, ever since that she, she's become, like, before she knew how to cook. Um, but that was kind of it. She just made the, the, the normal meals, the basic meals. Um, but since going vegan, she just like really started exploring a lot. Um, she, I mean, the amount of meals she, she can make now is like incredible. So she's improved so much um, cooking skills and what she uses. And um, yeah, how she, how, how she, gets different things that have different things that I need in it. So, so, so our, our, um, the food variety that we have now is, 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 a, is a lot bigger to what we had before. We're just a lot more adventurous now. And obviously, it's a lot more healthier as well. So, it's, yeah, it's, just, it's been really positive for, for both of us since we, since we changed. What's, what's the kind of go-to for you, the go-to meal, if you had, if you had to pick? My, my favourite meal that she makes 
is um, I love Satan. So we all love Satan. We, we eat that all the time. Um, it's Satan. I can't remember what sauce she uses. I feel like it's teriyaki, but maybe it's not. Uh, I can't remember. But it's some, it's some flavored Satan with like sticky rice. It's like the nut. I love it. It's so nice. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really nice. You normally put like the, the broccoli, broccoli or the stemmed broccoli with it. Really nice. Very nice. Have you have you found like as you I don't know about about you I was, certainly as I've gone into the and it sounds like we were probably vegan about the same sort of time so three years yeah. um, it's about three years and a bit for for me now and I've I've definitely found I started I mean it's obviously you're in a very different line of work so the obligation is probably there a bit more strongly but um, I, I certainly found over the course of time that I just discovered a lot more vegan junk food and it's become more of a, a, a sort of a bit of a dangerous trap for me yeah. and there's sort of an obligation almost when you see something that's vegan you feel like you, you have, have to, to buy it you have yeah, to you go have and to. try it <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you found much of that? Has that been a yeah, trap? Yeah, yeah, we, we do that we do that all the time literally if you maybe see my story like two days ago we, um, we, we come across some things from Tesco. We never shop at Tesco, but we saw a few things online. And then we literally never shop at Tesco, but we just shopped at Tesco just because we wanted to try them things. So, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Whenever something's vegan, you have to try it. Because um, before, like, junk food-wise, we never really knew. knew we, we looked at everything. We looked at chocolate. Oh, it's not vegan. We looked at biscuits. Oh, they're not vegan. So we, we, we kind of struggled to find treats. But now it's like everywhere's loaded with them. <laughs> Our cupboards are full of chocolate. Our cupboards are full of biscuits. <laughs> it's like, it's mad. It's like, in the last two years, so many more things have, have, have come out. And then like, you start finding people that are local that are making vegan donuts. And it's, it's crazy, man. So it's literally no lack of supply for, for all our vegan treats now. It's when you find yourself in the, in the car driving to somewhere that sells like a vegan donut. Yeah, because <laughs> you've you've seen it on Instagram or something, and you think, well, we better go and get some. <laughs> yeah, we literally did that not too long ago with some don- with some um, guys that make donuts. <laughs> oh, it's de- definitely a, a dangerous trap to fall into. <laughs> I know, I know, especially as an athlete as well. Well, yeah, I bet, I bet you just, you just, you can't too much. Yeah, can... I, I, I t- like, I tell her that like, um, don't don't buy any any sweets any chocolate because obviously like, once it's here I, it's, I find it hard to resist it so I'm like just don't bring any into the house but then she always ends up seeing these really cool things that she think that I would love to try so she ends up buying them and I'm like why have you done that <laughs> but then they're literally there I've never tried them before so literally the other day she bought some have you seen the new lotus biscuits with the little cream in the middle they're like Oreos oh what really so, they're, they're crazy they're so nice she bought, I've literally been through the pack already those lotus biscuits generally I find are a bit dangerous to be honest. I can't can't be having those in the house. Can't, you can't stop in it. You can't stop. No, nah, they're just too easy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, they're a huge problem for me. Yeah, they're a big problem. Man. <laughs> Have you found it's been a bit of a, a, a sort of a, a learning curve for you from a point of view of like bringing up a little one? I know from my experience, there's sort of you you worry more obviously as you would about their nutrition than you probably do about your own even when you're a yeah. if you're a pro footballer I imagine has that yeah. been a bit of a learning curve for you you felt responsibility to do more research from from that point of view um you no know, I just I just kind of seen it as if I I know kids are maybe a little bit different but I just kind of thought if this food and what I'm eating is is nutritious nutritious enough to fuel an athlete who literally I'm training constantly every single day free three sessions a day and I'm getting what I need. I'm sure my kid's getting what he needs as well. And um, just like, I mean, yeah, you look, you look out for things. I mean, um, if, if, if he looks, you know, if he gets to a point where he's tired all the time or, or he's just, there's, no, there's something that's just not quite right, then yeah, you, at first I looked out for that. But he's flying, man. He's, he's got so much energy. He's really strong. He's, he's, he's growing nicely. His skin's nice. Do you know what I mean? So I, 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 re, I do feel comfortable, very, very comfortable with what, what he's eating. And then even if there was something um, up with him or I, I just don't think meat and dairy would be the answer anyways. I just feel, I just feel like, okay, I have to give him something else, that, uh, another type of plant-based diet. I just can't, log- logically, when I think about logic, I'm like, there's no way meat could make, make it better. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I do, I do feel like um, I'm, re- I'm very happy with, with his diet 
I think that's such a valid point, actually. I've definitely, you know, I think you've, you've helped me with that that point there because I think as a as a as a dad, first time dad with our little little boy uh, who's who's two, um, you you know, friends and family perhaps who are a little bit skeptical, uh, a bit yeah. like you were saying there with it with a cough or a cold, you know, if it, any anything looks in the vaguest bit up with him, yeah. Then, then it's it's probably because of that. You get a sense, even if they don't say yeah, it, that yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. there's a of sort of a vibe of, oh well, it's probably because of the diet. And then I think yeah. to myself, well, why would why would sort of animal flesh or or milk solve that? Like, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think you're so right. <laughs> then I, I just think as well. Okay, so okay, he's got this cold, and you think it's because he's vegan. But then what about? the colds that people get when they're not vegan. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't really make too much sense. And ironically, what 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 you say to most people when they, they get sick who aren't vegan is you need to eat more fruit and veg. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so true, man. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. And I think it's just getting out of the way of thinking because, to me, it, a, lot, a lot of things that, we, that people think and that we think and we've grown up to think, they're actually just, just not right. There's just big myths that we just believe our whole lives. So I really, um, I really just any new information I, I, I get now, I really just try and look at it openly rather than just based on what I've learned in the past. And I'm just open to changing my mindset about things. That's what this, that's what veganism has taught me a lot about. Did you get yeah. that sense when you first sort of became vegan? Like, I'm just intrigued there that point you you make there about sort of you know you feel like you sort of your eyes have been open to to something and you, that you've learned something completely different to what you've been told since since yeah. a child and and then I, I think particularly in in the world that which you you kind of live in as a professional athlete um built upon you know protein sources and and this kind of stuff as well as obviously micronutrients but the kind of macronutrients are so important and so on and so forth and like you say you've got nutritionists at the top level of sport saying you need to you need to eat this uh, this animal product, that one, so on and so forth. Did you feel almost a bit of a kind of a matrix moment? Like you've you've suddenly seen something that just <laughs> nobody else is seeing once you've discovered this? No, do you know what? Do you know what? I, the, the thoughts I had, I just thought, um, I, I, I just couldn't. It's crazy because I, I, ne- I never, I, I just don't get how people could get told this information and just not see that it's wrong. For example, when, when, I, when, I, when I thought about it, I just thought, um, straight away it made sense to me. I didn't have to think about what I previously thought and, um, and convince myself that this is the right thing to do. I just kind of thought, actually, how have I never come to the conclusion that eating, ca- drinking cow's milk is crazy? <laughs> it's crazy. And I don't get how when I explain it to somebody else, they still don't see it that way. That's That's... That's probably the, 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 the thought I first had. I just kind of just thought like, what was I, what was I even thinking? Like, why, why does everyone believe this is, this, is, this is the way we're supposed to do it? I just, even now, I feel real stupid giving my, my, my younger kid cow's milk. It's actually ridiculous. But, but like you say, that it's, it's a real tough one formula though. I mean... Yeah, it's a tough one. There's a, for anyone listening, if, if, if you can make a vegan formula, you'd make a killing. Oh, they, uh, I, I, yeah, we, we, uh, Kate and I had, a, had that very concern when our little one was born and real, like, like yourself, like just really tough, like the breastfeeding thing. Yeah. So huge. what did you do? Did she, did she breastfeed? So she, she did in the end, yeah. But at the very beginning, we, we were really... Um, essentially we we weren't let out of the hospital initially because he wouldn't latch and all the rest of it and um yeah and they so they were like well we, you're gonna have to get him some formula and we resisted and we we ended up using the sma one that's vegetarian uh, uh, the soy one yeah that's the one that's the one that we tried. and it's got uh it's got lanolin in i think or it's got a vitamin d supplement that's made of sheep's wool but it's so it's kind oh, of really? yeah so it's kind of not properly vegan it's still got an animal product in it but it's um yeah. but it's as close as you can get and the only one we could find um was in france and you had to get it shipped over at some crazy cost and obviously lengthy delay as well to get it 
to get it sent. Yeah. So we ended up using the SMA one for a period of time and then eventually like he latched and and we and we were away and it was fine but um but like that's a huge sticking point I found for so many parents is yeah. this just isn't a decent formula and like as much as in an ideal world I think you think breastfeeding is going to work it doesn't work for everybody so yeah definitely it's, it's uh, a real tough one I'm with you like if someone could produce that it it would be they'd make a fortune and yeah, they'd help definitely. a lot of parents out there who want to bring their kids up vegan definitely man but like you say I think you know your your intention is to to move off it once once it's right to and once you can yeah. so but yeah I'm, I'm totally with you on that point before though I think uh, milk is the one for me more than more than anything I I, I often think mm-hmm. what a what a crazy thing to do when you think about it to, to, crazy yeah <laughs> to take on the milk that's meant for the uh, you know the sort of child of that animal why yeah. why would you do <laughs> I often say if you was if you were seen drinking it from the source you'd get arrested yeah. people would be like what are you doing it's, it's just the oddest thing in the world yeah it is but no. you know what I mean that's just what obviously you've been uh, that's what you've been taught and you've been taught that it's normal but I just mean like when you just stop for a minute and actually just think about it how can it make sense to you but like you say yeah, it's, it's so deep that yeah, I've had that conversation many times and I've said, look, there's no other animal that does this, think about it, and and yet <laughs> it doesn't yeah. doesn't register. Like yeah. it's so deep. Well, even know? if I get even if I gave you gave someone someone else, if you gave them um dog's milk, they'll be like, What? No, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It nice. it would be. It'd be absolutely nuts. But the, the marketing is so powerful and we've seen it for so long yeah, you know as it's, kids yeah the, it's the biggest magic trick ever to be done it's crazy it's yeah that I, I came across this uh steve jobs clip a while ago and i think i posted it on on, on instagram because it was just fascinating but he was talking about marketing at a, at a conference or like a keynote type presentation and he yeah. was talking about how clever the milk industry was where it was kind of declining people were realizing it was unhealthy this was like in the sort of um 70s 80s yeah. it was it was on the decline and then they essentially came up with the i don't know if you've ever seen the got milk like campaign that yeah. became like like you know you it was just everywhere just it, it was a huge huge campaign it had nothing to do with the product or how good it was and it and it sort of basically just turned the fortunes of milk um yeah. and it's just nuts it's just the the power of marketing to keep something like that it's just so in people's psyche that that's what they have to do exactly you know? Yeah, yeah, nice, no, true, definitely. But like the protein one, isn't it? You know, you see that with um, people uh, nowadays, whether they're athletes or not, are obsessed with the idea of protein, even if they're not, you know, they're yeah, not I, doing anything physical. I, know, I find it. that crazy, you know, I really do find that crazy. That we, I don't know why they make that like it's so important. Like it is important and we need it, but the amount that you think we need is, is really is nuts. I mean, I... I can I, I, in a, in a normal day I could get just as as much protein as um as someone else eats meat. Okay, I maybe have to eat a little bit more food than them or take an extra shake, but I can easily get it. But I just feel I just feel like you're not a bodybuilder. We're not bodybuilders. We don't need that much protein. Yeah, totally. Do you know what I mean? I, I I do I do think it's um it's a bit bad. And it's definitely overhyped, especially for footballers or just people in general. I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, it's different. Um, but as well, like, uh, you, can, you, you get a guy who says, oh, you're vegan. Oh, so where would you get your protein from? When I know for a fact, you probably don't even eat that much protein in a, in a day. And you've never worried about your protein levels <laughs> ever before. But now I said I'm vegan. Now you're, you're, do you know I mean? you're, you're super healthy. You're super um, conscious about your nutrition. Where, do you know I mean? Before you were just eating KFC every day. That's, that's, I mean, that's so true. And connects like with whether it's you're talking about you know, we were talking about children earlier, what people feed their children, and then we'll ask yeah. you that question about whether your, your child's yeah, eating right. well. Same goes for the protein debate. Everyone becomes a nutritionist as soon as you mention the word yeah. vegan. Exactly. <laughs> I've, got one, 
one final question for you, Kev. So I really appreciate your time. Uh, and you've no, you've no given problems. plenty of it. But w- how confident do you feel in us kind of reaching or probably our, our end goal, our ambition of the world transitioning to, to veganism? Um, so yeah, I'm, or I mentioned it to you earlier. I mean, some days I feel like it's achievable and other days I don't. So today's one of the days where I don't. Because um, as I was talking to you today, uh, before, about the, um, the incident that happened in America of the cop killing, killing another, another black man, I just feel like today you made me think like we, we, we're still struggling and miles off treating each other right. So I just don't really ever see how we're going to um, treat animals right. So it's, it's, yeah, I mean, some days, I mean, you, you, might, you might see the activists doing really well, Earth and Ed, putting out a really good piece of content and you think, do you know what? That's actually going to affect a lot of people. And then, yeah, I mean, there's some days where I feel like it's achievable. Some days I feel like, it, like it's not. Um, but either way, I do think we, we are really, really far off. But, yeah, I, I think it obviously doesn't mean that um, we stop doing the work today. I mean, if it would be, be selfish to maybe think that if we're not going to, just because we're not going to do it in our lifetime, that we, that we should stop talking about it. Um, so, yeah, I do think it's far away, but... It's, 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 it's achievable and if the world goes on long enough if we don't destroy the world <laughs> in the next 10 years or whatever if it goes on long enough I definitely do think it will at one point it will, it will change just like how everything if you think about think about all the in just things in the world where slavery or women's rights eventually it does change and, that's, uh, and I do feel, feel like that's, that's, it's, it's the same thing and as well, if you think about me and you, who bringing vegan kids into the world, and we'll teach them um, the, the, uh, the, the different, the different way and different perspective. Then, I mean, it's only going to grow, ain't it? That hopefully they'll pass it on to their kids, and it will just grow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I've got a, probably exactly the same blend of uh, pessimism, with, but also hugely optimistic as well. That eventually. We'll get there if enough of us. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'll see it, but it ha- I think it will happen. I think you're probably right. We'd be lucky if we saw it, but hopefully yeah. our, our our little boys will at yeah, some yeah. point. But it'll be interesting to see it maybe like in 50 years what changes has happened because there'll definitely be big changes in 50 years. Do you, we- I mean? you, you kind of see the amount of like for our, I saw a picture today of how all the the clothing brands that have banned fur. So do you know what I mean? It's, it's little steps that you probably don't even hear about every day. A lot of small things in the background that are happening that you don't hear about. So maybe in the next fifty years there are there are there will be some other other big changes. You'd hope, sort of like from from an environmental standpoint, it sort of it sort of feels like we, we just we just have to. There will be a point where there's there's sort of no choice, you know. Yeah, but you know, I I, I just don't even feel like that's that's that argument's that strong enough for people, you know. Because to be fair, if I if I if I put it down in um, like the environment, in my list of reasons, it would probably be towards the bottom. It would be animals first. Um, yeah, probably come maybe second or, or joint second or third with, with health. But I just don't feel like that, that argument is even that, that strong for people, for, for enough people. I feel like it has to come from the ethical side and people to wake up and see what, what we're actually like, contributing to. I think that's the strongest argument and I think that gets overlooked a lot. I think health gets put first. But I do think the ethical side should be should be put first. I feel like that's that's the most powerful. Yeah, I think it it's certainly very very pressing and real and now, isn't it? And sometimes the environmental argument can feel to people like distant. Um, and yeah. it, it's almost like unless it was happening to them right now. Exactly. Yeah. Then then they might connect the two. But I mean, even as we you know we in this sort of situation that we're in now from a you know pandemic point of view and it's been really easy for for people in the media and so on to to set to sort of uh, blame this chinese wet market and all the rest of it and you know that's obviously you know an awful practice and i wouldn't wouldn't want that to be a, a practice that continues but i just yeah. think the whole the whole animal and agriculture industry just because you don't see it is just as just as violent and and yeah. um and but like, if you if you look now you on instagram you see it you, you can see it everywhere you can go find the videos everywhere now 
Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. It's it's easy to see, it, but you've got to be you've got to you've got to go and you've got to look a little bit, haven't you? Like you yeah, say, you've got to be yeah, open true. to wanting to see it. And um, yeah, yeah, it's true. I always find it a bit baffling how people can't watch the videos. They're like, no, I can't watch it. And you know, you got to have a little think that maybe there's a reason why you can't watch it. <laughs> I think I think that's the that's the thing, isn't it? You've hit the nail on the head. Is it, it's once you accept that you're going to watch it, you you then have to accept that you're doing something wrong, and yeah. and that's very difficult for people. Don't want to give that up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, so, true. it's almost like if I don't see it, then I don't have to change. But yeah, you, we've we've all got a responsibility. I think you know people like yourself are leading the way on that. You know when you when you say you know I. I have a platform. I have a responsibility if I see something happening to stand up and do something about it. And uh, I think that more power to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And I just, just think I, I, need, I need to do more going into the future as well. It's something that's just a challenge for me pretty much every day, really. Love that. Love that. Well, look, thank, thanks so much for your time, Kev. And I yeah, hope, no um, I hope you and the family are keeping safe and well during during this period and and at some point when it's sort of safe to do so yeah you're back to to playing football as well but uh all yeah, in good time definitely. yeah for sure <laughs> and thanks for all you're doing because it's you know I, I do think there are more people like yourself who are, mate, are providing these positive examples than uh i think we you know we we stand a far better chance of moving to the world we want to see yeah, you too, man. With the, with, the, with the podcast, you've obviously got some really good guests, and you're pushing the, the really good message as well, and getting some real um, positive people that are doing good things on a plant based diet. So that, that's a, definitely a big help as well. I appreciate it. There's lots of them out there, so yeah, you just need to get their stories out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Cheers, Kev. Thanks very much. No problem, man. Yeah.